Hey y'all, welcome back. Glad you're here. It's that time of year where we need to stock up on fruit trees. Now, I know, I know, we got a ton already, but you can never have enough fruit trees. And the reason for that is attrition on fruit trees. The attrition rate is pretty high, at least for me anyway. I've lost a lot over on the other property and there are a lot of diseases all over the place. So really packing yourself full of fruit trees and fruit bearing plants on your homestead is super, super important. So let's head on up to Mineola, Texas to Bob Wells Nursery and we'll show you around that place. And then we'll show you all the trees that we're gonna get this year and then we'll figure out where we're gonna put them. Because actually some of these, I'm having a difficult time trying to fit in. We might do some container trees this year, especially with figs. Anyway, come along with us. Let's get going. Oh, so, girls, do you know where we're going today? Harry's? Harry's? No, well, we do need to go to Harry's. Harry's Building Supply. Anyway, <laughs> where else are we going today? Do you know? To buy fruit trees. To buy fruit trees. We do this every year, and it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's get going. All right, we finally made it to little old Lindale. Actually, it's big Lindale now. That's where we used to turn, over there. Oh, right there. Okay, we're in little downtown. That's where we used to turn to go to Bob Wells Nursery. But now we've got to head to Mineola, which is another, I think, 12 miles up the road. I've actually never spent a lot of time in Mineola. I heard it's a nice little place, but we're gonna check it out. Check out this new Bob Wells Nursery. What a beautiful new place this is. This is really cool. And what's really nice, check this out. At this new Bob Wells Nursery at Sorelli Farms, we've got a map. This is so, so nice to have because it's fairly big out here. We've got all of our fruit trees, or all of their fruit trees, out front and near the road. And they got this cool little garden right here, which is really nice. They've got a seed exchange on the inside? Oh, this place is, <laughs> has got a lot. So I recommend you come in here. They've got uh, some good looking trees that I can see so far. Let's go pick out what we need to pick out, but we're gonna grab a cart here and we're gonna head off into this area. They also have a huge uh, farm back here for um, decorative trees, for just regular uh, non-fruiting trees and landscaping trees. So we're gonna grab one of these carts and try not to get the girls' boots too muddy, but we're gonna get these trees, let's go. We're gonna go get blueberries first. How's that? Blueberries mm. all the way in the back over there. So we've got a lot of different uh, berry plants, blueberry plants here that we already have. We've got some Austin, uh, we've got Climax. Uh, let's see what else they have here. We've got Brightwells, I have all of those at the house. Um, we've got Tiff Blues and we've got Powder Blues. Perfect. These are all blueberries that do really, really well in this area. So we do a lot of research on the Texas A&M uh, Extension Office website or the Extension website. A&M has a great amount of information. I think I've talked about them before, but all these berries do well in this area. So I believe you do need a Powder Blue and a Tiff Blue together or two Tiff Blues or two Powder Blues. Uh, I'm showing my lack of knowledge about the blueberries, but we've already got almost every variety or every one of these varieties on the property. So uh, I think they'll, they'll help pollinate each other. Today, we are gonna grab some Powder Blues. So these look very, very nice. You look at the leaves, oh, yeah. they're good green. I don't see any uh, disease on them, of course. 
I know this uh, place is going to take really good care of their plants. And look, they've got Yummy. a decent mm. amount of berries on them, which is really cool. Ooh, look at the dark, beautiful green color. This one right here, I think we're probably going to grab that one. Ooh. Okay, my wife's been begging me for two years now to get kiwi. And they have one variety left. Now, it's important to know that when you're buying kiwis, you need a male and a female plant. So in this case, we're gonna have to get two plants or else you're just not gonna have any fruit. And as you can see here, the tag on the plant will tell you if it's a male or a female. This is an acai female. We need one of these and then we need a male. And here are the males right next to it. So grab one of each. All right, let's grab the best looking one here. That's a beautiful thing about these nurseries. You can go out and grab them yourself and pick what you want. Oh, that one looks like a good one. It's got a, even a new shoot coming up. So we're gonna grab this one. Here we go. This female has a lot of growth on it. It's looking pretty good. Let's grab this one. So whenever I'm at a place like this, shopping gets the best of me. So right next to the kiwis over here, I saw black currants. If you've never had a currant, they're, they're very, very good. And uh, do I wanna buy it? I don't know. I think I will. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna grab a black currant uh, because I, you know they're kind of hard to find and this is one of the only places in this entire region where you can find stuff like this. All right, so when you're in a place like this, you're gonna be tempted to buy absolutely everything and you need to be really, really smart and do your research ahead of time before you do that because there are things that grow well in certain areas that don't grow well in other areas. And you need to jump in, do that research, figure out what ones are disease resistant for your areas, especially with like grapes and Pierce's disease and things like that. And you need to have the proper room or space to plant all of it and have it be healthy and thrive in your area. So don't go grabbing one of everything at the nursery when you see it. I know it's tempting, I know it's tempting uh, because you love to garden, you love to plant, but just don't do it. Put the brakes on a little bit and do that research ahead of time and you will have a much better experience down the road with the things that you're growing. <laughs> Come on this way. So we've got a lot of these on our property already. We have a Celeste, we have a Texas Everbearing, uh, I think we have a brown turkey. We've got an LSU purple, we've got an Alma. Uh, right now they've got Celeste, brown turkey, Texas Everbearing. We've got Black Mission, and we've got, ooh, I didn't see this one on the website. This one's new up here. Hmm, interesting. We've got a White Adriatic. I'm gonna try that one because I want to. <laughs> and if you've never had a, uh, a fresh fig, you are in for a ridiculous treat. They're easy to grow and they are just some of the most amazing fruit you can possibly put in your mouth. Okay, so here we go. Here's the white Adriatics. Look at this one. This one is beautiful right here. We're gonna grab that one and get it into the cart. Look at this. Look at this slacky, slacker here. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're supposed to be helping me out. Come on, you got the map. You got the map, now you need to tell me where the next one is. Pear? Pear? Oh, the Asian pears. Yes. That's where we're going next. The Asian pears. You tell me where they are. Look at the map and tell me where they are. You you love maps. So. Okay. Figs, we're right here. And uh, so we can just... Where are the figs? Show me where the figs are. Right there. Where's the figs? Right here. Okay, so we got to go back that way? Right there. Okay. So... Over there. Yeah, let's go find some Asian pears. Asian pears. Asian pears. All right. Check them out. So with Asian pears, you need to understand that certain varieties need another pollinator. But the two varieties in front of me, the Shinseki and the 20th century, do not. They're self-pollinating. There's a graph right there. Mm -hmm. It looks healthy and started to heal over and all that kind of good stuff. And this is nice and healthy bark. Here, it's got a good thickness, nice and straight. Hey, y'all can look back at our other fruit tree videos, which goes through all the things to look for when buying a fruit tree so that you get the healthiest, best tree that you could possibly have. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I'll refer you back up here 
and you can check out those videos. So we've got everything that we wanted to get today. I know it's not a lot, but like I said, you gotta be really strategic about where you put things on your property and we're running out of room real quick up near the house. So slowly but surely, we're building things up. Don't go super crazy right away unless you got 50 acres and you can just slam 100 fruit trees in an area. And I got my two little uh, helpers. So we've grabbed everything that we wanted, but I'm gonna take you around to look at a few other things like their greenhouses. So here we are in one of their greenhouses. This is where they keep most of their uh, tropical plants and there's a lot of citrus in here and some other things. And the girls are already out the other side. Come on girls, come back this way. Uh, but I know they have a ton of other stuff that's normally um, on on the menu <laughs> anyway uh, they've got some avocados I think they have dragon fruit and a lot of tropical exotics and things like that which is what I really love about uh, Bob Wells nursery is they carry so many different things if you want really exotic plants that are hard to find anywhere else this is the place to be so this is really neat guys check this out this is kind of you know a take one, leave one kind of idea with the seed exchange, which is essentially what a seed exchange is. But it's really neat. They've got this beautiful uh, chest of uh, drawers here. I can't remember what these things are called. If any of you know it, leave me a comment in the comment section below. But they've got a lot of different things. Um, we've got flowers below and it looks like a fruit above, fruit and veg above. And I am gonna take some borage today. And next time I'm here, I have a ton of kale and broccoli that I'm going to bring them. So, in specific ones. Because if you read this, only open pollinated seeds, uh, there's a lot of instructions there on what to do. So, I want to be, uh, I want to adhere to that policy and make sure I give them the best stuff that I have. Oh, and then check it out over here. They've got some organic. Uh, this is all organic. This is beautiful. Ooh, I might be leaving with something else today because check this out. You know me, guys. You've seen my videos on doing the orange oil. Now, this is not easy to find. We always get ours on Amazon, but check it out. They've got some here, and you know what that's good for. You've seen my ant killing video. They've also got spinosad soap. They've got garlic juice. Ooh, very nice, very nice. They've got the copper we use also. Uh, copper soap fungicide. Look at all this stuff. Beautiful. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, garret juice. I've heard of this. I've never used it before. We might be using that today. And we've got a lot of Epsoma or organics for different things here and some seed starting stuff. I might not be getting out of here uh, under several hundred dollars today. I don't know. Oh, and here we go, guys. Check this out. We've got Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. We just started using these guys. I've had great luck with their seeds. They have really great seeds that are geared towards a southern climate. So, you know, we're in zone 8B, and uh, I'm, I'm really loving this company. And they have some here in the store, which is really nice. All right, this is Genevieve, everybody. She is uh, very knowledgeable and very helpful here in the office. And you probably have play a whole bunch of different roles in the company. Hats. Yeah, yeah, many, many different hats. But come see her. Uh, come see this uh, Bob Wells uh, nursery, this new one. Bob Wells at Sorelli? Yep. At Sorelli Farms, all right? Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.